taking good ideas and automating them involves algorithms, step-by-step -step instructions to solve problems. And we use algorithms every day. Whenever you perform a series of steps to do something, tying your shoelaces, making a bed, preparing a meal, driving to work, hundreds of different algorithms. The power of computing comes from taking such steps and automating them. We see this in the automobile industry's assembly lines. Repetitive tasks involving a sequence of steps automated by industrial robots. The advantage was that robots rarely made mistakes, could work 24-7, and were usually quicker than human workers. But we also now see this in many other areas. Farming, scientific experiments, searching through law books, self-driving cars, washing machines. Modern society is becoming defined by the automation provided by digital technologies. But to automate a process, we have to be very explicit and exact. Because computers are very good at following instructions, but very bad at working out if instructions should be followed. Here is a common example involving making a sandwich. Now, structured computer programming involves just three types of activity, and these are called control structures. We can represent these with diagrams, most commonly flowcharts, but also other forms such as Nazi Schneiderman diagrams and various other more complex processes. The first of these is sequence, where the algorithm does a sequence of steps one at a time. The next is selection, or branching, where we choose between a range of different pathways. And then we have iteration, or repeating, where we can gain efficiency by repeating blocks of code. In the curriculum, sequence is developed from foundation. We use bbots and other approaches and games to develop their understanding of sequence. With selection and iteration, developed by year six. Though in reality, students will begin to engage with these concepts much earlier. Just these three structures, with the addition of subroutines and modularity, where we can take blocks of code and use them elsewhere in a program, form the basis of almost all computer programming. It is the speed and accuracy at which software can perform these steps that gives the power to algorithm automation. And because algorithms follow similar rules to mathematical operations, there are a range of more efficient types of algorithms. We mentioned Google searches. This is known as the PageRank algorithm. And it works by counting the number and quality of links to a web page to determine a rough estimate of how important that website is, using the assumption that the more important websites are likely to receive more links from other websites. And this is what then determines the order of websites that are shown when you do a Google search. And there are a range of algorithms that students will learn during digital technologies, each providing a more efficient way of doing things. Searching a set of data is a common problem. For example, finding the name of a friend in a phone book. Not that we use phone books anymore, which is another example of digitization. But if we still had phone directories, say one that is a thousand pages long, and we have to find the name Zurich Smith, we could use an algorithm known as a linear search, starting on the first page and examining each name one at a time from the start of the directory until we find the name. And this would be great if the name was on the first page, but very inefficient if the name was on the thousandth page. A more efficient algorithm is known as a binary search. Here, our first step is to split the phone directory in half. If we know the name is in the first half, we get rid of the second half. If we know the names in the second half, we get rid of the first half. So now we're left with 500 pages. We repeat this again, and we're left with 250 pages. Repeat again, 125, 
and 62, 31, 15, 7, 3. And after nine steps, we're left with a single page. The tenth step would often be to do a linear search, going through each name on this final page one at a time until we come to Zurich Smith. The real power of algorithms run on computers is that we, this can all happen very, very quickly. But also, it is scalable. We could double the size of the directory and it would only take one additional step. And each further doubling would also only add a single additional step. So we could search very, very big collections of data with very little additional computational effort using a binary algorithm. Unlike a linear search algorithm, which would take twice as long, in this case, an additional thousand steps if we double the size. So there are many other search algorithms and algorithms to sort information, um, perform recursion, backtracking, generating random numbers, and many other processes. While these are not referred explicitly to in the curriculum, as students explore digital technology solutions to problems, just as there may be new technologies that will allow new solutions to problems, algorithms are also technologies. As students can build up an understanding of a range of algorithms, they can, they can then apply to address problems in new ways, just as was done with Google. Student understanding of algorithmic automation is fundamental to their ability to solve problems with digital technologies. And along with abstraction and data automation, form foundational skills in developing students' computational thinking.